Today we're going to be looking at virtual machines, as I've been meaning to cover virtual machines for a while now, and I'm also going to be introducing another operating system today, so I figured I'd knock out two different topics that I really wanted to cover in one video. Now, what is this operating system? Well, I'd like to bring more attention to Prestium. Prestium is an amnesic operating system for the I2P network. It's similar to Tails. In fact, it's inspired by Tails itself, but Tails operating system, as I've covered in the past, is for the Tor network. And there wasn't an equivalent out there at the time that this was created. And I've actually been considering covering my first impressions on Prestium since December, when I read the very first post introducing the idea of Prestium. Now the reason I waited until now to do this video was because on my channel and blog I really like to only introduce things that I already have confidence in. And to be quite honest, in December I had no idea if this was going to be a safe operating system. And after this many months have gone by, I feel good about introducing it to you guys, and I'll never introduce something that I don't personally trust myself. And so far, Prestium has gained my trust as far as you can gain my trust in a couple months. And so I do believe it is well worth trying out. If you've had difficulty with my posts on I2P, if you have trouble setting up I2P browser or any of the other I2P topics, Prestium comes ready to go. What's really cool about Prestium is it's all ready to go, much like Tails is for the Tor network. So if you've watched any of my tutorials, I've seen some people say, hey, I'm having trouble with this, or can someone give me a step-by-step -step instruction? Well, if you need step-by-step -step instructions, I do have those typed out on the public blog. You don't have to register to read the post there. The virtual machine that we're going to be covering today is a topic. It's a virtual machine. It's a simulated computer running in another computer. So it's it's basically a emulation of another computer where you're able to run an operating operating system, a image or ISO you can download. So with genome or gnome boxes, which is what we're going to be covering today, there's also VirtualBox. That's the most popular option for virtual machine work. And today we're going to be looking at gnome boxes. So I wanted to help people get started with that. It's a great way to test things out without necessarily affecting your computer. Now, of course, with VirtualBox, there have been vulnerabilities in the past that allowed people to escape virtual machines. I should mention that, but it offers a lot of the benefits that you get from sandboxing. And sandboxing is something I have covered. So if you have an interest in your privacy, your security, uh, these are all posts I recommend to check out first. So these are my most recommended posts and you can check all that out on the public blog. Now let's go ahead and get started with GNOME boxes. So what we'll do is we'll install GNOME boxes. You can do that by running something like Pac-Man capital S and GNOME boxes. That'll install it on an Arch-based system like Endeavor OS or Manjaro. Or if you're on a Debian-based system like Pop OS, you can also use the apt command, apt install, and then GNOME boxes should do the trick. And once you've installed GNOME boxes, you can go ahead and open it. It should be called boxes. So if you click on that, it'll take a moment to start up. Once you start up boxes, you'll be able to add another operating system, a virtual machine, by going to this plus sign here. And then you can simply either download and browse an operating system to install. You can even go on DistroWatch and download any operating system image that you would already burn to a disk and install. And you can perform the installation process just as you would with a normal 
boot to disk install, but you'll be instead installing it as a virtual machine. So what you would do from there, if you download an operating system of your choice, in the case of today, we're using Prestium as an example, and you can check out the Reddit there as well to get more information on Prestium. We're going to be taking a look at it today, and you can also go to Prestium.org to download it. So you'll download this, if you, for example, and once you download that, once you verified it with the checksum or the PGP signature and then what you'll do is go here you'll go to this plus here you'll go to install from file and once you do that you'll simply select the one that you want to use and then it will allow you to relegate an amount of memory as well you can go with something like two gigabytes of RAM and something like 20 gigabytes of storage space is a nice number to start with and once you've done that you should be able to start it up and it'll boot up just as it would on your computer if you were to insert the install disk so once you've done that it'll start booting up as you can see it's beginning to boot up and then it asks what you would like to do here I'm gonna go ahead and press enter it's gonna start booting up the operating system just as if I were to burn that same exact ISO file to a disk so optionally you could burn it to a disk and try it that way and boot to that disk just as you would any other Linux installer disk now one thing I should mention is when first starting Prestium unlike the Tor network where you have dedicated nodes or routers that are running across the world 24 hours a day on the I2P network it's a little different here and you'll have to wait for I2P to connect and build the tunnels for you. So you're going to have to find peers and build tunnels. And you're going to want to give it about 15 minutes before you actually start browsing the I2P network. But while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and check out some of the applications that Prestium offers. So if you right click, you'll see a drop down menu and you'll be able to open the web browser, the I2P web console, which is in the LibreWolf web browser. Similar to the way I have set up the I2P desktop you can find on the Gidea Onion found linked in the description. And so what it's working on is tunnel creation now. And as mentioned, you're going to want to give it maybe 15 minutes to get a good number of connections built. And once you're ready to go, you can then go and open a new tab and then start browsing the I2P network. We're going to give it a few minutes and then we'll check back. You have all the things you would have with Microsoft Office, but in an open source fashion. You have multimedia apps that are pre-installed like Audacity. You have GNU Image Manipulation Program, which is a great pixel graphic design program, great for photo editing, great for graphic design. VLC Media Player, a standard. Accessories, we have Feather Wallet, we have KeyPass, Veracrypt, which is a very excellent encryption program. If you have an interest in encryption, creating hidden volumes, creating all different types of encrypted volumes, Veracrypt is a great place to start. In addition, we have a GPG front end. GPG is GNUPG, which is GNU open source PGP. You can use that just as you would another GPG front end. We also have a BitTorrent client as well. You can take a look at that. We have Gajim, an XMPP encrypted messenger. We have HexChat, which is a IRC client. I actually did introduce that. Let's make something. It's always good to keep in mind the different types of things that are being shared across networks in logs and other ways that metadata can be scraped and keep those things in mind I generally recommend sticking with user because it's very generic and we can try connecting now 
As you can see, it's connected. So it looks like our tunnels have been built in I2PD. Now with I2PD, it's a little different from Java. Now I2PD, one of the benefits there is it is very lightweight. And so because it is very lightweight, you can actually use it on a single board computer without it using too many resources. So that's what I do with I2PD. I actually, for my main computer, I use the Java I2P for that using the I2P desktop setup. So if you have an interest in something that is automated that starts and stops the I2P router for you, check out the I2P dash desktop I have on the Gidea Onion, which I'll link in the description. But if you need something that's ready to go, Prestium, it's looking to be a nice option. And this is my first impression video. We may go into more into this operating system later. Another cool thing about Prestium is they have right in the drive drop down menu your anonymity level you can actually increase the hops in your tunnel by changing your anonymity level from normal to high or even humorously enough tinfoil hat so you could change that over if you wanted to but keep in mind normal is going to be the fastest high anonymity is going to be a little slower and tinfoil hat is going to be absolutely sluggish so keep that part in mind before changing these settings and it's nice to see it come with all of these different applications I think it's a great start for the application base that it comes with now that we have the I2P network started we can then go to something like I2P forum, I2P forum, .I2P using just HTTP. Whenever you're having trouble with going to an I2P site, you may need to use the jump helper. And what that's going to do is it's going to convert everything so that you can actually visit the site. There we go. The jump helper has added it to our address book and now we're able to visit the site. This is a common part that I hear with people trying I2P for the first time. They get a little frustrated because things aren't as straightforward as using the Tor browser. But one thing that Prestium tries to do is make it all much easier to get started with. So you don't have to set up anything. It's already set up for you. So my final thoughts on Prestium, it's a really great start that it's gotten off to. The developer definitely deserves a lot of credit for putting this together and bringing I2P to the masses in a way that's much easier to get started with than some of the other options that are out there. You can find out more information on GNOME boxes at GNOME.org and check it out. And we'll cover some more information on virtual machines in the future and different ways to use them. And uh, do check out Prestium if you have an interest in I2P. It's worth a look. Make sure to follow the blog and do me a favor and share this video. A big help, the biggest help you can do is simply reposting posts and videos on the internet, posted on social media. We need an army to normalize human rights and privacy. Without that, the laws that are coming out are extremely dangerous. It's important to get active and simply reposting these videos and tutorials is one small thing you can do to help the channel and also to help the movement fighting for our human rights and privacy. And it's free to follow the blog, so check it out at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. Like, share, and subscribe, and you can find out more information on the blog at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. And I will be back later with more on how to protect your security, privacy, Linux, and open source.